Hey, KM6LIW radio viewers, uh, we're going to talk about GPS and amateur radio. Why you need a GPS for your amateur radio? Let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, this is the November gang that is supporting the KM6LIW Patreon page. This is just November. I know you can't see the date on the screen, but it's it's November 17th when I'm recording this. And this is just the support we've received through November. So thank you for encouraging me. Uh, you're really enabling my amateur radio and Linux open source software habit, um, probably to a fault. Thank you, guys. I, I used to read everyone's names. I can't even read two weeks worth of patrons here. Thank you, guys, so much. All right, so amateur radio and GPS. Why do, why do amateur radios even have GPSs installed in them? Why do you buy a GPS? How do you hook one up? Um, how do you use it? Why do you need a GPS? Well, there's a couple of good reasons, and they're largely based on digital modes, which is why you'd want them. Um, so a lot of you are familiar with, like, uh, WSJTX FT8. Um, in fact, we're going to fire it up on the DigiPi here just so you guys can see it. Um, it's going to go into FT8 mode. In fact, I'm hooked up to a brand new ICOM 705. Check this out. How cool is this? I'm going to turn this down because, man, that's annoying. I know you can't hear it, but you know what FT8 sounds like. In fact, I got the VHF antenna hooked up to it, so I'd kind of be surprised if we <laughs> see a contact. Every now and then you do. Um, you know, it would be cool if you had more than one antenna output on the 705. ICOM, that's you. That's your cue. We need more than one antenna output. So the reason we need a GPS on FT8, let me put this over on the... Uh, 20 meters. Not that we're going to get anything uh, on FT8 today. It'll be interesting to see if we do pick it up on the VHF antenna. So the reason we needed a lot of these data modes, so um, uh, FT8, WSJTX FT8, and also JS8 call, um, use networking windows, uh, network frames. So there's a receive frame and a transmit frame. Yeah, we're getting contacts in FT8 over the VHF antenna. That's funny. Okay, so anyways, they're 15 second frames. And if you don't know exactly what time it is, everyone's clocks have to be perfectly in sync, okay? Um, otherwise, you're transmitting, you know, the, the first half of your frame and the last half of, a, you know, the global frame windows. And they're every 15 seconds. And in fact, you can see offenders here, um, people who are off. I think this DT stands for delta time. And this is how far people's clocks are off. Um, at least that's the way I understand it. So it's it's not a lot, but everyone needs to be kind of their clocks all have to be in sync. So Craig, why don't you just get time from a network time server like a normal person? Well, when you're out in the field, you can't do that. You don't have that option. Um, you don't have a network time server. You don't even have internet. So a GPS is a really good source of network, of not network, of time uh, on the earth. And without time, if you don't know what time it is, you can't participate in WSJTX uh, FT8 uh, nor uh, JS8 call. In fact, I'll fire that up and you, we can see the window there too. Let me stop WSJTX. Let's stop. Then we click on JS8 call. Fire that up. In fact, JS8 call is new on the DigiPi, which is what you're looking at here. Um, it's not out yet. This is DigiPi 1.6 prototype, so JS8 call isn't there yet, but you can see it's running. And let me pick, click on JS8 call here. And it's it's, it's JS8 call is basically a rewritten version of WSJTX FT8, so it uses a lot of the the same terminology, ideology. Um, so there's this 15 second frames. You got a transmit frame and a receive frame. And if you don't know what time it is, you can't participate on WSJTX or JS8 call like you're seeing here. I can probably zoom these guys in a little bit. And again, you see down here at the bottom, this is the frame counter: one second, two, three, four, five, six seconds. And uh, that's a frame, and you can see activity. Each one of these green lines on JS8 call is a, is a 15 second frame. So again, I can't stress it enough. I'm going to say it over and over. You don't, if your system doesn't know what time it is, do not participate on these networks. Um, it is it's just annoying. So how are we going to get? Uh, how are we going to know what time it is if we're out in the field and we don't have a server? Well, that's where a GPS comes in. Um, you can there's a couple of different kinds of gps's gpsi i don't know what the plural is but their gps is really cheap now remember when you used to spend like four or five hundred dollars for a, <laughs> a gps these don't have a map in them or anything but i think i got this on amazon for maybe 10 bucks and uh, you plug this into your raspberry pi that we have down here and uh, with a usb otg cable that's what this is you know it's just how that works and your gps d if configured on your pi will start driving that um, additionally you can have a time service like crony that's the one i use c-h-r-o-n-y and it will get time from G the gps daemon which is using the gps attached to your raspberry pi now 
In the case of the ICOM 705, there's a GPS built in, which is awesome. Good job, Icon, ICOM. And we can use that GPS. So let's let's talk about how we can do it just that. So I've got a shell prompt open here. Um, there is a website for reference here. There's a lot of them on, on how to do this. Let me see if I can if I can find it here. I had one pulled up. So you know, this is one I kind of picked up at random. This is Mike Richards. Mike, good job on this. This is how to set up GPS and crony to get network time from GPS satellites. I mean, exact time down to the, I don't know, nanosecond, because GPS has to be pretty exact to function. Uh, the takeaway here that you want to do is install. You don't need all of this stuff. I guess you could use crony. You don't need the Python GPS. Um, to install this on your Pi, you'd simply do and I don't like when people put dash y on here either, because I'm not agreeing to everything up front. That's like agreeing to an end user license agreement. You know, someone punches you in the face. Hey, you accepted it. Okay, so, so I wanted you to do sudo apt install GPS and GPSD dash clients. And that's going to install the GPS software that's going to read the GPS that's built into your ICOM radio or the GPS dongle that you plug in. Um, a lot of these, if you just want to boot up your Pi with this plugged in, it'll get the time at boot time, and then you can unplug it and use it for other things. So it doesn't have to be plugged in full time. Now, in this case, I've got GPSD is already plugged in uh, or is already installed. GPS clients is already installed. Um, so once that's there, I want you to go to CD ETC default. I know this is a weird spot. Normally, you go to ETC GPS something, but you go to, on Raspberry Pi OS and Debian, you go to ETC default, GPSD and GPS, let me get this right. And then I want to VI GPS D. And it's actually just GPS D. Uh, it's not dot com for anything. Uh, so some, some things you want to, to add here in this config file. Let me minimize this web browser for you guys. Uh, the highlights is USB auto. You generally want to be true unless it conflicts with some other device on your thing. What this says is when you plug in a USB thing, check to see if it's a GPS. Um, you also want to put GPSD options. You want to push a dash N. This is required, okay? You have to put dash N in this file for this to work. Um, additionally, if you know what the device file is for your GPS, like for the 705, it always pops up as TTY ACM1. Uh, the radio VFO and cat controls on TTY ACM0. So the GPS is always on ACM1. Go ahead and put that in this file as well. And then go ahead and save it. I'm just going to quit there. Um, after that, I want you to do, if it's not already installed, you can do apt-get install. Now, so GPSD is, is configured. In fact, why don't we do a system to restart it, CTL restart GPSD. Okay, that's going to make restart the service that reads the GPS. And that's restarting in the background. And also, if, if not already configured, uh, apt git install crony. This is the software that reads the GPS info and updates your system time. Cool. And I probably already have it installed. Yeah, it's already at the newest version. So here, I want you to go to etc crony. All right. And then I want you to edit the file crony.comp. And there's a couple of changes we want to do here. The most important one is the add to the very last line, add this line. Um, this is going to use to tell Crony to get a reference clock from shared memory that's provided by GPSD. Um, it's going to use NMEA standard sentences, which is a, an age old GPS standard. And then Crony will re, be able to update your system clock that way. Um, in order to simulate this, I commented out the network time servers because normally crony will try and get time from a network time server and this is on the internet so it'll just get time from here and be on its way but to demonstrate this i've commented this out don't comment this out okay leave this uh, uncommon leave it like that okay i'm going to comment it out just for the, the purpose of this conversation because we're pretending to be diligent operators in the field and we don't have access to internet because because we are roughing it somehow <laughs> all right so crony's installed we configured it what we can also do is uh let's restart crony just because we uh, technically edited its config file so system ctl restart crony and so that restarted now let's see maybe your gps is or isn't working there's a couple of ways you can figure that out so over here on the ic705 i don't know if you can see my little pin there's a little tiny icon of a satellite there and it's not blinking or doing anything the fact that it's there means gps has a lock on the satellites and we're cool um so at this point we can run something like gps or uh, cgps 
And you'll notice how this whole screen just populated with numbers, and it looks like you know some sort of DEFCON NORAD screen. It always reminds me of that. Like, you remember the, the what was the computer Whopper? <laughs> I don't know why it reminds me of that. Anyways, this is GPS data coming in live from the GPS on the ICOM 705, which uses a device file called what? Slash dev slash TTYACM1, um, which is what we put in its config file. Okay, so GPS is working. I'm going to hit control C and get out of that. Um, and then I also want to see if the system time has updated. Now, I, you know, I could just type date and see if the times kind of matches my wristwatch. Ooh, yeah, it probably does. But let's make sure it's getting time from the proper source. So we can type crony C tracking. And this is what we want to see. This is the output of crony C tracking. So you'll notice the very first line here is reference ID is NMEA. Remember what we said? The NMEA, is, that's the industry standard for GPS sentences coming from the GPS in the ICOM hardware through the GPS D service, which we installed and configured. And crony is actually reading that through a shared memory segment. I know, I, I, we're going to talk about nuts and bolts here. But that means time has been updated. Um, this is how what this clock skew is. I don't know, maybe if you understand GPS stuff, you can tell me what the rest of this stuff means. I don't know. Honestly, don't care. All I know is the clock is correct. So now I am fully authorized to run JS8 call uh, because my system has the proper date and time. That's why it's displayed prominently here, guys, uh, on both uh, JTX, uh, WSJTX, FT8, and JS8 call. Um, so we know we can we can operate that. So that's time. So everyone's probably looking at me like, well, Craig, isn't isn't GPS about location? Yeah, it totally is. Um, so we have trackers. We can build a tracker with the Digipy here using APRS, um, so people will know where we are. Um, in fact, let me put it over into memory mode. I'm on an APRS frequency in the United States, and uh, if you're familiar with Direwolf, you can create a Digipeter or a TNC or iGate. Uh, I've got other videos on Direwolf, but uh, somewhere there's going to be a direwolf.conf on your system. On the Digipy, in this case, the TNC configuration file for Direwolf is direwolf. I know, imagine it, right? TNC.USB, because we're using a USB based radio. And there's a couple of lines you can add to this to make a, a an APRS tracker that'll use the GPS in your ICOM 705, and that's G, uh, this line and this line. Okay, let me get rid of that. So I want you to add these two lines. This one's wrapping like crazy. So add the line GPSD local host. That's going to tell Direwolf to use your Raspberry Pi itself, not some server on the internet, to get GPS data. And then I also want you to put in a T beacon line. A lot of you are probably familiar with P beacons, which sends a, like an RF beacon either out to RF or maybe to you know, the internet. But in this case, Direwolf has implemented something called T beacon, and I believe the T stands for tracker, so tracker beacon. And uh, when Direwolf starts up, we want to, to send a tracker beacon at, at five seconds, and then go ahead and send one every 30 minutes. And then there's some other information we can send in that beacon. So GPS, oops, I'll screw this up, GPSD localhost, and then tbeacon. So these two lines, add those to your direwolf.conf, and we're, we're making a tracker. And I'm going to write that file out. Now what I need to do is restart the service. Actually, I need to fix that. That should be green because JS8 calls running. You're seeing QA in real time here, people. <laughs> so JS8 call should be stopped. Um, it is. So let me fire up the TNC and iGate up here, and now I want you to watch the radio. In fact, I'm going to turn up the volume, because at the first five seconds, it should transmit my location in a beacon. Uh, I think that was an incoming call. Yeah, I've got the volume turned up really loud. I paused you guys to figure out. I didn't even, I couldn't remember where the volume knob was on this. Okay, so I've got the volume knob at a reasonable level here. I'm guessing you guys can hear it. So what we're going to do is fire up the TNC and I gate. now that we've got the T-beacon and GPS D lines configured in direwolf.conf. And I've got the monitor on, I believe. Let me make sure this is going to make some noise. Yeah, this is going to make some noise when it, <laughs> in fact, it's full blast. We'll see if you guys can hear it. So I'm going to start the TNC and iGate, and you're going to hear this thing blast out a position packet based on the GPS and the ICOM. So I'm turning on the TNC. And in five seconds, okay, so now it's a TNC. That's someone else. Wait for it. Ah, there it is. <laughs> it just transmitted our position five seconds after Direwolf started, which is what we wanted it to do. 
So again, the GPS is responsible for all this, not only getting network or t universal time, but also to get our position so we can create a cool tracker using the DigiPi and this ICOM 705, which is in uh, TNC mode. Um, so speaking of the DigiPi, if you guys are wondering what this is, this is a Raspberry Pi project uh, that I've put together. Um, it's at Krager.org slash DigiPi. This is kind of a shameless ad for it, I suppose. But we are building a huge community by this. Development is going crazy. Um, this is early release software from KM6LYW Radio. So this gets to patrons uh, first. It's a uh, pretty simple build. Um, well, depends on simple. But anyways, it's a TNC, iGate. It's all of these services that you see here. Uh, WinLink, uh, AX.25 network, uh, it's got the uh, slow scan, FL Digi, JSA call, FT8, all of that built in. And that's Krager.org slash DigiPi if you want to try your hand at building one of these. It works with uh, just about any radio if uh, you're willing to uh, put together an interface face cable or a USB cable, which is really simple in the case of the uh, IC705. Okay, so that is why you need a GPS for your amateur radio. I really appreciate appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, if you can, like and subscribe. I know we're almost to 1,000 subscribers, so I don't know what happens at 1,000, but it's just kind of an awesome number. If, if you can push me over 1,000, I would really appreciate it, you guys. Uh, this is KM6LYW Radio, and I am clear.